this and then I'm gonna screen share here in a moment. Okay, I'm gonna pull up our program. You all see that okay? Yeah? Hopefully, okay, beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna get it a little bit bigger here. This probably looks like maybe some gibberish. If you've never seen a program that looks like this, hopefully it's not too, too crazy. Um, but the way that you read it, okay, we'll start there. First off and first, you know, foremost, write your name, okay? Write your name where it says athlete. And then I know my box here is in the way, but your team is written right there, okay? Um, and then you just move from the top down, loves and left to right, okay? So Monday is lift day right here, okay? Um, this area up here, eventually we will write in your testing scores. So one of the things that we have a, a really good culture built around is just continued accountability and improving our, our, you know, our athleticism by tracking our stats. Does that make sense? Um, it helps coach know where you're at. It helps me know where you're at. It helps most importantly, you know where you're at. Okay. Um, I want you to understand how you're progressing and how you're getting better. And if you're not getting better, okay, what do we need to do to get you there? Okay, I'll use uh, Meg Hamilton, who um, is a senior this year, but is coming back for our fifth season, we just found out, which is really exciting. Um, Meg is one of the, you know, the best people in the weight room, and she's consistently battled to just get better and better and better and better a little bit at a time, okay? So she's going to be a great mentor to all of you. Um, so your testing scores are important. We test you the first week of the season when you get going. Test can be a scary word. I don't want it to be a scary thing, okay? Um, I want it to be kind of a, all right, this is our springboard moment. This is where I know where I'm at. And from here, I'm never going to be at this point ever again. I'm only going to get better. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and some of you come in and, and just absolutely demolish, right, what you're at. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting. I love test week. It's a fun thing. Um, and we practice for it. So this whole program is built to get you ready for that. Is most importantly, get you ready for hockey. Okay. Um, but within that, these are our kind of what we call key performance indicators, the things that we're looking at for you to do well in. Okay. So we look at um, your bench press. We look at trap bar deadlift. Um, we look at chin ups, how many you can do broad jump, jumping out, vertical jump, jumping up, and then um, a five ten five agility shuttle. We're also going to be playing with um, rear foot elevated split squats this fall. So um, if you've ever front squatted, has anybody ever front squatted before with a barbell? Okay, cool. Um, back squat to, you know, I tend to stay away from back squat, philosophically speaking. Okay. Um, number one, it's really hard to do very well. If you are a back squatter and you love it, I respect that. However, we know that it can just be really hard on your hips and your lower back. And there's really no point, as you all know, later in the season, right? As you get going, like those lower, that lower back and those hips get cranky, right? Um, even in the best of people who are best, you know, the, the, in the best condition they possibly can be, um, all across the hockey world, we've really kind of gotten away from it, okay? Just because it can really flare things up where we don't need to. So I'm all about cost and benefit, okay? I want to give you things that are going to really benefit you and not take away from you. And that's kind of one of those things. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, but you play hockey on one leg, right? For the most part, you're really never on two feet unless you're on face off and goalies, you're a whole different situation. So Margaret, um, you know, we handle you guys a little bit differently, but for the most part, everything's the same. Okay. So that's what these are up here and they'll be written in as you go. But um, right here, okay, you write in the day that you're going to be doing it on. So if it was today, you'd write in Thursday and then you'd write in today's date, 5, 26, 22. Okay. Now it seems like a little thing to write in the date. It's really important. Okay. Number one, because I know, and you know, when you did something. Okay. So you have that accountability with it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and I have to say too, with division three, strength and conditioning in the off season is always voluntary. And I have to say that. Okay. So what that means is that it's a want to, and not a have to, we want to win championships. We want to have that opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. And so we have to prepare for it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, but I'm excited that you guys are on board with that mission with building this program. Um, and then right underneath day and date, okay, is your warm up, right? So I just give you a thought of the day here. And then there's kind of four or really three or four parts to our warm up, okay? And by the way, there are videos of everything here on this card to help you out, okay? So I feel like I'll never remember this, <laughs> don't stress, because there's videos, okay? Um, but you're going to start with something that gets your heart rate elevated. So you're going to do a, um, an example 
um, of a drill called a wall drive that works on knee drive and explosiveness, really kind of working on our first three strides, if you will. Um, after you do the wall drive drill, then you're gonna come over here to the muscle activation and joint mobilization, which just means you're gonna get yourself warmed up, okay? But you're gonna do these three drills right here for the number of repetitions it says, okay? And then lastly, you're gonna do something that's fancy word here called potentiation. Um, Lena, you're the neuroscience peep, right? Okay. Um, she's like, oh no, what are you gonna ask me? But neurologically speaking, right? My brain controls my muscles, right? It gives me that electrical stimulus to move, okay? Um, we're nor'easters, we have lightning. I'm all about the neurological stimulus, okay? And the, the electricity that's cranking through our bodies, right? So we have to get it to move fast and explosively. So potentiation is a fancy word for getting my brain and my muscles to work together explosively. Okay, so we always finish our warm up with some sort of what we call snap down variation and it's a plyometric variation, okay? And there's like literally a thousand different ones, but we start with pretty basic ones, all right? So that's your warm up right there, kiddos. And it should take you no more, maybe the first time you do it 10 minutes because you're gonna be looking at your videos and stuff, okay? But after that, it should take like six to seven minutes. And if you're pretty used to like, you know, getting in the weight room and doing warm ups. I hope it's something similar to this, okay? And it doesn't look too Greek to you, but that's your warm up, okay? Um, you hit all your ma major muscle groups, all your different movement patterns, and then we get into your list. And they're all designed to make you successful at the bigger list that you have in your program. You guys with me so far? Okay, cool. And if at some point you're like, coach, what are you saying? Like, stop me and ask questions. Okay, I love it. I'm, I'm really interactive that way. So once you finish your warm up. Okay, then you're going to hop down into lift day. So this card right here, okay, on this where my cursor is, that's lift day. This is lift B. So we're, we're talking about lift day at the moment, okay? Um, you're going to do exercise A1 and then exercise A2. There's also a little, um, sometimes I'll throw in something that's really specific to the day that you're doing. So lift A is um, something we're going to work on wrist stuff. Does that make sense? So I'll throw something in there. So it's really kind of an A3 there. It's just kind of hidden. So I want to point it out to you, okay? Um, but A1 is a two foot box jump. So you're going to do a box jump, okay? Um, and you're going to do five of them. Does that make sense? Okay, and there's four sets here, three and four sets. So you're going to do your five box jumps. When you finish that, these are supersetted together. And superset means that you're going to go from one exercise to the next exercise to the next exercise and then repeat it, okay? So they're kind of partners, if you will. So you're doing five box jumps. Then you're going to come down and do this drill right here that's for wrist strength, okay? You're going to do six of those on each side. And then you're going to do A2, which is um, a split stance or a split grip chop or, or lift variation. Again, all these videos are there for you. Um, and I am so willing, okay? If you're like, well, coach, I need a lot of like just help with this. We can jump on a Zoom or a FaceTime when I'm in the weight room next week and we can go through, I'll watch you do every one of them and help you with it. Does that make sense? Okay, so after you watch the videos, watch those first of me doing them. Um, but after you watch them, if you still feel like you need some clear, you know, clarification, I'm here for you. All you gotta do is shoot me a text, okay? So um, while you're doing these things, see where it says weight right here, okay? Um, two foot box jump, that's just body weight, right? So you're just gonna put a check mark anywhere that you use just your body weight, okay? Um, where we go down with the wrist work here, you're going to use a dumbbell. That's what DB means, right? So you're going to write in the weight of the dumbbell. And it should, it should be light for this, by the way. So it's probably going to be between 5 and 15 pounds, okay? Um, that's not a hero exercise or one you're trying to do a lot of weight on. It's something you're trying to really focus on your form with, okay? Um, and then A2 is the same idea, but you're going to write in the weight that you use on the cable stack, whatever type of cable you have available to you, Okay. Um, if you don't have cables available to you and you have bands or whatever, again, that's another thing. Let me know if you're like, I don't have access to that. No big deal. Okay. Just let me know and I'll work with you to find a variation that we can put in that you can get, you know, accomplish what you need to accomplish with. Got it? Okay. So we understanding how that works. We do the, the A1, the A2, and in this case, the little A3 that's in there, if you will. Um, and you write in your weight. It's super important to track what you're doing. I can't require you um, and nor would I to turn this in when you come into to school, okay, in, in September. This is purely for you, okay, and your abilities and tracking what you're doing. When you get to us in the fall, um, unfortunately, you guys are kind of learning one way to do this. We're gonna have, anybody ever heard of Team Builder? 
before? Yeah, okay. So we're gonna have iPads on each rack and your program's gonna be built into Team Builder on the iPads. So it will, like, we'll still have a version of this on the iPad, but you'll enter your weight on the iPad underneath your name. So there'd be four of you on one iPad on one rack, okay? So right now I'm looking at like M, Laney, Hannah, and Margaret. So the four, let's say the four of you were on one rack. You would pull up your specific profile and enter your stuff in. We'll worry about that later, okay? But for now, you're tracking it on the paper. Got it? Okay. So as soon as you finish A, so you'd start with your box jump, you do your wrist strength, you do your cable chop, and then box jump, wrist strength, chop, and then one more time through, you finish with one extra set of box jumps. Okay, so that fourth set there. You're gonna jump into B, okay? So then you do B1, B2, B1, B2, B1, B2, okay? And you go back and forth for the number of sets that are listed there, okay? Um, right now, we're doing, um, for the most part, our major strength movements of five, like five by five set scheme. So really what we're looking to do, my friends, is build strength, that's it, okay? And I'm gonna say this until the cows come home, I want you to focus on your foreman technique always first and foremost. I do not care about how much weight you move, okay, right now. I really don't. There's a day for that. That will come. Right now, I need you guys to move really well and really focus on form and technique, okay? So that's, again, another reason I'm always here for you. Um, our, you know, our seniors that are graduating will tell you that um, of the, all down through our, you know, who's going to be a sophomore, junior, and on the all the way up the line, um, I'm really, really, really form driven with you guys. Okay, I do not want you to ever get hurt in the weight room. That is the last place you should ever get hurt. Does that make sense? Okay, we should be getting better at all times in the weight room. Um, so you'll see, I put a little note in here. FY is you guys first year. Okay, um, if the movement is new to you, and or if it doesn't feel good, or you're just unsure of it, body weight. Stick to body weight, kids. Okay, and then you can weight it as you go. All right. Um, this right here, this 3-2-X that you see, are you guys familiar with tempos? You ever heard of a tempo? Some people are, okay. Um, a tempo is the speed at which you move through the, the movement that I've prescribed, okay? So right here, it's 3-2-X. So it's a rear foot elevated split squat. You're popping your back foot up on a box or a bench, okay? And you're in a split squat stance. You're going to hold two dumbbells, one in each hand on each side. So that's two arm dumbbell, right? Um, but you're going to lower down three, two, one to 90 degrees at the bottom of your split squat. You're gonna hold one, two, and then you're gonna explode up. You're not actually jumping, but you're just driving tall. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're lowering, holding, and controlling back up. Word to the wise kiddos, tempos can make you a little bit sore, okay? You shouldn't be overly sore, but starting a new program and a new format of things, you might expect a little bit of it, okay? Um, I don't want you to be crazy sore. So it's smart if you want to, weeks one and two, you guys especially, and I'm telling you this because I mean it, start with maybe two or three sets. And then weeks four and five, progress to four and five sets. Does that make sense? Okay. And or keep the weight lighter. Totally fine to do that too. Okay. Because again, the, the team is kind of coming off doing a big preparatory period for this type of program. And you guys are kind of entering it. But I still feel like it's important to give you the same movement. You follow me on that? Okay. Um, now, one last little point here. See this little fire? Okay, right here. It's not because you guys are fire, you are fire. But it's because I want you to think about your intensity. Okay. So, where you see WU, that means warm up. So, that set could just be body weight. It truly could just be body weight. Okay. It might be 10s in each hand or 15s in each hand. Okay. It's really lightweight and just getting the, the technique down and reminding your body, oh, all right, this is how this should feel. Okay, then where you see yellow and ML, that means moderate light, okay? And what that means is that you, and I want you to write this down if you have notes, okay? Um, moderate light means that you're gonna do five reps, but you probably could do another five to seven really easily. So you could do up to 10 to 12 of those repetitions of that movement with the weight that you're using. Does that make sense? Okay, keep in mind the tempo too, because that's gonna change things a wee bit. Um, where you see M and kind of that light orange, moderate, okay, now you're getting a little heavier, that means, okay, maybe I could do another, let's say, four of these, okay, four to six of these, so total, maybe I could do eight to ten of them, okay, 
And then where you see the burnt orange or that dark color orange with the MH, that's moderate heavy. Okay, that means, all right, now we're, now we're not playing around anymore. Okay, maybe I could do another two to three of these. Okay, so now you're looking at a range of like, let's say six to eight repetitions. Okay, total, obviously you're only gonna do five, right? Um, and then the red, okay, that's obviously heavy. So maybe you could, if you're, if you're lucky, you get one more, okay, one to two more reps. You follow me on that, kiddos? Okay, so it's just a way for you to say, all right, I'm going to keep continuously challenging myself and keep pushing to do a little bit more each time, okay? Um, but again, I'm going to say it over and over again tonight. If your form doesn't allow and it says to go up and, you know, the color changes, don't go up. It's okay, okay? Nail your form first. Make sure it feels good before you try to add weight to it because that doesn't help us in the long run, okay? Um, and then, by the way, the five each, the little E there, that means each. That means you're gonna do it on each side. Gotta say it, just so you know, okay? Um, and then, has anybody done a chin-up negative before or a slow release? So you jump up and hold and then you slowly lower down. Sorry, I'm like a ghost over here. Um, so what that means, okay, is you're going to do three chin-up negatives, but each of them are going to be about five seconds long, okay? So you're going to jump up and hold, and then one, two, three, four, five elbows are all the way straight, and then you reset, jump up again, okay? And you do it three times. So you're resting like maybe 10 seconds between each round. Does that make sense, kiddos? And then as you go, the time changes and the reps change, so pay attention to that. So week two, you're going to try to go a little, like a little slower for eight seconds, but you're only doing two of them, okay? Um, and then week three, you're only trying to go for 10 seconds, but the reps change. And then week four, ASAP is not as soon as possible. I know it's tricky. It's as slow as possible, okay? So I bet nobody's ever told you to go as slow as you possibly can. Everybody's always yelled at you to go faster, right? Okay, um, but I'm all about the control kiddos because if we build good breaks, you're gonna be super fast. It's just the way that it works. Okay, you can't have a sports car without brakes. It's pretty until it crashes, right? Okay, um, or it can't corner. So um, that is how to read that kind of thing, all right? Um, on A2 here, and it's the same for each list, B, A, B, and C2, um, if you'll see where light with the green, that means light, you could do another 10 reps of that. That's easy money, okay? And then it goes to moderate light and moderate. So in that particular scheme, you should be getting a little heavier each step as you go, okay? Um, with uh, the B1 and the C1 here, it's how it's all the same color, it's pretty monochromatic, right? You're just trying to use the same weight for each, each set. Does that follow too? Am I losing you yet? Are you guys okay? All right, totally cool to be fully honest with me, I promise, okay? Um, and then you move on to C, okay? C1, C2, back and forth, all right? Um, if you are adept, see RT is returners, Okay, FY is, fresh, is first year. Um, I'd like you guys to start with a goblet squat. I think you, maybe you're familiar where you're holding the, the dumbbell or the kettlebell underneath your chin and then you're squatting, okay? You can get heavy with that too. So don't let that fool you, okay? It's really not that much easier than a typical barbell front squat, all right? Now, if you've already front squatted and you're like, man, I'm really good at front squat and I really enjoy it, I am fine with you doing that. Okay, but I just want to make sure that your form and technique is where it needs to be. Okay, so I would love it if you guys want to send me a video of you doing it. Okay, it helps me get to know you before you get in. Um, and if there's anything I see that I'm like, oh, maybe, hey, I want to coach that up a little bit, I'll let you know. Okay, if it looks great, I'll be like, dude, that looks awesome. Go for it. Okay, but um, not a bad idea to start with goblet squats and kind of re-enter the world with an organized program that way. Okay, um, and then has anybody ever heard of a Copenhagen side plank? That one's a little bit different. Yeah, the eyebrows raise. Um, there's a video of it, okay? But it's a, a side plank that you do um, with your knees elevated and you're squeezing the bench, okay? So you'll see the video of it, but it's really big groin activation. Um, and one of the things that I know most of my hockey players, men and women come in with are groin issues, okay? So I haven't asked about anybody's injury history and I, I won't because I don't want you to, that's a personal thing. Um, but you're welcome to send me a quick synopsis of your injury history. If you have one, knock on wood, I hope you don't. Um, but if you do, feel free to let me know what, you know what sort of things might bother you or things if you have any limitations, you're currently in physical therapy or working through an injury, 
you know, holler at me and let me know. Okay. And I'll help you work through it. I promise I'll kick your butt any other way I can. All right. But I'm going to make sure that we take care of those injuries and get them better. Um, quick side note, I've had seven knee surgeries. Okay. I've torn both ACLs, um, broken both ankles several times. I'm a mess. I'm a mash unit. Okay. Um, I played college basketball at uni, so I'm a nor'easter too. Um, but I tore one in high school and one in college. Um, and I never, and I mean never, want to see you guys miss playing, okay, because of an injury. It happens sometimes, I get it, but I want to help you bounce back faster. Knock on wood, if I'm superstitious too, if that happens, okay. Um, and or let's prevent it if we can, right? So I throw in little things that are really going to help us based on research and basically rehabilitate ourselves before things happen. It's called prehab. So I'm preventing injuries by doing certain things. Does that make sense? Okay. So everything has a purpose and a reason. Um, and then you're going to finish with your Ds. Okay. So the Ds in the list are always kind of like some accessory stuff. Um, and what I mean by accessory is things that might be, you know, more, if you want to say isolationary in nature, um, they're usually not because that's not how I roll as a coach. I'm really total body and focus with you guys because it's how you skate. You use your whole body to skate, right? You play hockey. So that's how we focus on things. But they're kind of like one last little kick in the butt, okay, before you go. Um, so you're going to do something that kind of balances you out in D or kind of challenges you a little bit more. They're kind of like the last thing. They're not less important because they're last. But um, there's a thing that people tend to want to skip out on, right, towards the end, okay? Don't. Do your Ds, okay? They're really important. Um, and then lastly, here on your card, you'll see conditioning, okay? Um, I'm not a huge fan of you guys conditioning right after you lift or right before you lift, okay? It's on there at the bottom. I get that. And it looks like, oh, that means it's after. If that's the only, have, the only time you have in the day, totally fine, okay? Go ahead and get that done. But if you can, okay, as you go through the summer, if you can condition, let's say in the morning, and then you can lift at night, that's a little bit better. Does that make sense? Or even a couple of, even if it's at mid afternoon and you're lifting in the evening, or, or even if you flip it, you lift and then you condition. However you want to do it, if you can space it out a little bit, it's a little bit nicer on your body. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and all of the conditioning on each day that's built in, I know it's never anybody's favorite word, right? Um, but they're really specific to hockey and then what we call energy system that you're going to use, right? So we usually are out for 45 seconds and then we're off for three shifts, right? For the most part. And then we're back on. So what's what we call a three to one work ratio, work to rest ratio. So you've got to go work really hard and then take three rounds of that off and then go back to it. So our, our conditioning reflects that for the most part. Okay. So I don't know, does everybody have access to a, an Airdyne bike or a fan bike? Some of us do. And if you don't, a regular bike works is my point. Okay. Um, but the Airdyne's always a little bit extra, helps us out. Okay. But you're going to basically work on these little uh, intervals down here. Okay. And they're all kind of snapshots. I want you to really think about hockey while you do them. Right. So the first week, okay. Um, you're going to do six, 10 seconds hard, as fast and hard as you can. And then 50 seconds to kind of go slow and recover in between. So it's six, six minutes. Does that make sense? Okay. And then the next week you're going to do three rounds of 15 seconds hard and 45 seconds like slower. And then the third week, you're going to do one 20 second hard as fast as you can and 40 second recover. Okay. Um, oh, excuse me, not week. That's, that's a day. It's really not that much. So it's about 10 minutes total of, of biking. Okay. So that's all in one day. Sorry. I said that not in a week, it's one day. So you repeat that each week, but only on Monday. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I just want to point out like this, what 50 yards right here, YB is yards. Okay. So, you know, has anybody ever done farmer carries before? Yeah. Or carry variations. We do a ton of them. They're really important for keeping your shoulders healthy and your grip strong. I never want to see your sticks on the ice. Okay. You lose your stick because someone got in there and flashed it out. I get all cranky. Okay. Um, I get A because they knocked out your sticks. So I want to yell at them. I'm on the glass thing all the time, by the way. Okay. Um, but I want you guys to be able to really keep your sticks and that's going to help translate to your shot speed and your pass accuracy and all those other good things too. Okay. So again, don't sleep on your farmer carries. All right. So any questions so far on how that's all put together? Have I confused you yet?
You're still with me. Okay, beautiful. Um, so then it's the same idea. Okay, on Wednesday, you're going to do lift B and you follow the same pattern, kiddos. Okay, so you start out with your warm up, your heart rate, muscle activation, joint mobilization, your potentiation. Okay, there, that snap down variation. And then you get into A1, you have some hip mobility stuff on Wednesday. Okay, and then A2. Um, which is just a different variation of A2 and work on uh, Monday, okay? Um, so a lot of times within the programs, I have common themes, things that I want you to work on and get better at from different angles, because that happens on the ice too, right? Um, and you'll see that kind of reflected in the A's throughout uh, the summer. But, um, and then you move on down through, okay? B, C, and D, same idea. And then conditioning, these are shuttle, shuttle sprints, not that fun, I get it, but they're 25 yard increments. Um, where do most of you guys run? If you're going to run in the summer, do you run on a court or on the field? Anybody have any? Usually a turf field. A turf field. Okay, cool. Whatever you got. So if it has line delineation, awesome. You, you know what you're doing. Okay. Um, if you are on a basketball court, 25 yards is usually about end line. Well, it's not going to be able to be a high school court probably, or if you have access to a college court, but um, you can pretty much bet from end line to end line is about 25 yards. Does that make sense? Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea um, of, of how far you're going. Um, about three quarters of the way across the soccer field, like if you went from sideline to the other 18. Does that make sense too? Okay, and that's maybe even a little further, but I'm splitting hairs there. So do your best with that on the, the, the distance, but um, 25 yards, what we have a test that we do that looks at your conditioning in the fall. Um, and we will practice it in the fall. We'll do it throughout the, the week in training with the whole team. Okay. Um, it's not the beat test. I'm sure some of you have probably done the beat test in the past. Right? Beat, 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 right. Okay. Um, but it's kind of similar in some ways. So you're trying to make as many, um, in 45 seconds, you go as many sidelines as you can. So you're trying to you know, work a shift, right? And then you get the amount of time off you'd have to rest normally on the bench. And then you're back up again and you try to do as many as similar lengths as you can. And then one last time, so you do three rounds of it. It's much like you would do in a game. That's the idea behind it. Okay, so those ones prepare you for that. Okay, and that is weekly. So week one is 50 yards. You're doing six of them. Okay, week two is 75 yards, but you're doing four. So the distance gets further to those, but the repetitions get less, okay? So you're working your way up. Eventually we'll work up towards 300, but we don't test 300. I'm sure you guys have probably run those in the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my. Yeah, our men do, and they're like begging. They're like, coach, because Coach Swallow um, loves the 300, and I'm trying to work away from them. Some of the research says that it's really not the best way to measure hockey aptitude, right? Um, but he's all about the toughness angle of it. But anyway, so the, the men are like, come on, how did you get the women out of them? Like I didn't, just Coach Vindy and I planned it and we worked together. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so that's lift B and then lift C right here. Okay, this is Friday, all right? And lift C is a little bit more total body and they're all total body, they're working your whole body, okay? Um, but lift C is kind of like working on all the little stuff we didn't get to throughout the week, okay? Um, but similar format. So um, lift A, just to give you an example, is really focused more so on what we call lower body push, which are quadriceps and glutes. Okay, so squat type patterns, okay, knee bendy things, right? And then pulling and rowing. So we're working on your back. And I don't ever like to say one muscle group, but we're working on your back. And then we're looking, working on your explosiveness with your legs on lift A, okay? But you're still gonna challenge everything to some extent. Lift B, we're focusing more on your hamstrings and your glutes. So lower body pulling, okay? Um, and upper body pressing. So like your bench and your, your overhead pressing, that kind of stuff. So chest and triceps, okay? And then lift C, we're working on a little bit more of everything. So you kind of have all kinds of things. You have pushing, pulling, squatting. Um, we have some sprinting, we have some lots of core built in to lift C. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so you just follow the same format, read it the same way, warm up, go down through, okay? Has anybody ever done a plate push before? You put the plate on the ground and then you push it, okay? Um, if you don't have access to that specifically or room to do that or whatever in your facility, just give me a shout. I actually put that on there. Contact me if you need help with that, okay? 
Um, you can put a plate down on a towel and push it on a tile floor or a wood floor, okay? Just make sure there's no little rocks under the towel. So one time I did that on our court at UNE with men's lacrosse and we put towels down and put the, we put the, um, the plates on top of it and we were on the, off the side of the court, not on the main court, thank God. Um, and we were pushing them and doing plate push sprints. And then I realized there was a little rock stuck underneath one of the towels and it like gouged the floor in a circle as the guys like, that yeah, wasn't good. So just make sure you don't do that. Okay. Yeah, they forgave me though, it was fine. They refinished the floor and I was, I was safe. But um, you can also put it on like sliders, like slider discs, okay? Um, and those kind of things. But just give me a shout if you need help with that, okay? They're really helpful for us if you can do them. Um, but you're only gonna do a little five yard sprint, okay? And then come back. Um, I'm trying to think what else. The dumbbell is loop bridging and you'll see the video, but you're gonna put the dumbbell on top of your hips and do the hip bridge. Has anybody ever done that with a barbell before? Okay, cool. And again, if you are comfortable with it, kiddos, roll with it. That's fine. I just want to make sure that you feel good about what you're doing. Okay. Um, and then your conditioning is kind of, I'm not one, you're hockey players, you sprint, you go hard for 45 seconds to a minute, and then you rest. Okay, you're not really people who need to run, like long distance. That said, some people like to run and get out for it. I don't know if any of you are like that. I know some of my current players still like to get some distance in once in a bit. Um, it doesn't really specifically help us with hockey, but it's good to have what we call an aerobic base. And that's just having like a good conditioning level um, and utilization of oxygen. Okay. Um, so a 20 minute base aerobic run, you're just trying to go as far as you can. Okay. In that 20 minutes. Right. But I respect some people are not great runners who are hockey athletes right? Because you're, it's a very different pattern from skating. But some of you guys who've played multiple sports, you might really enjoy it and be good at it. Everybody's going to be all over the place. So I don't give us like a specific time frame to hit because I respect that your bodies are all different. Okay. So um, outside of obviously looking at the videos and figuring out what some of these things are, does the format and how to read it make sense? Um, I have two questions. Shoot, Lainey. Um, so for like each row, is that like a new week or is that a new day? Good question. So going across, you mean like this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a new week. Yep. So each day is straight down. So let me get up to the top here, kiddo. So we're, see where it says day and date. So if I were to go straight down that line, that's a day. So you go boom down. That's week one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you would do, you know, the five repetitions here and then here and then here and then here all the way down. OK, so then the next time you come to do it, the second column right here, that's the second week that you do the program and then the third week and the fourth week. So are you doing like each lift like once a week? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, good question. So instead of repeating the same exact lift three times in a week, we're kind of working on lots of different things but that's the way that it's structured. That's a great question, okay? So lift A, I could have, I could have helped this out a little bit anymore and put Monday, okay? Lift A is Monday. And then lift B is Wednesday, right? Each column is the four weeks. And then lift C is, is Friday. Okay, and then also for like, when it has like me, ML, 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 mm -hmm. like, do you want us to like stay at the same weight for like every set or do you want us to like build a little bit? Great question. So you're going to stay at the same weight for yeah. that, for that, for that day. And then the next week you're going to go up and then the next week you're going to go up. Okay. But if you look above that right here with like the, the A2, see how it builds. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends on what we're working on and the time of the year that we're doing it. Sorry. I don't know what happened there. That was different. Um, Sometimes we will build. And so when you guys get to me in September or actually in August, your third program, because there'll be three phases for the summer. This is phase one. Okay. But your third phase for the summer will lead you back to UNE. And I think the fourth week of it will actually take place um, as you come back to UNE. Okay. Um, that at that point, you will start seeing us build. So it'll be warm up. It'll be moderate light, moderate, moderate, heavy, heavy, maybe very heavy. And then we go from there. Does that make sense? Okay, that's kind of leading us to testing. That's a great question. Thank you. Okay, so right now we're really focused on continuing to build strength um, and focusing more on the tempo and the speed of the movement, the control of the movement, more so than the weight. The weight matters. 
but I also want us to focus on the kind of the descent, the control and the explosion back up. So we really want to think about those three phases of, of your movement right now. And that's why you have what we call a straight set where we have the same weight coming down. Okay, it's a really good question. Anybody else have any questions about the strength stuff real quick? I okay. have one. Shoot. Um, I noticed a lot of them have like SA next to them. What does that stand for? Oh, good question. Single arm. Good one, Jamie. Okay, so yeah, let's look through a couple. And actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. In the, um, did, well, I'll send, I'll send you guys the, your program shortly. I'll also include, I may not get it to you until this weekend, but I'll get it to you. Um, a little acronym worksheet that will help you as like a cheat sheet. So you're like, oh man, what did she mean that, you know, what does that mean? Because I know that's hard to, to look through. So um, let's look through real quick, but SA is single arm. Okay, so that just means you're holding on on one side. Okay, um, where you see half, so one half, one slash two, K, K, that means half kneeling. So you're gonna be on one knee on the ground and one foot flat on the floor. Okay, so half kneeling. Um, RFE, that's rear foot elevated. That back foot's popped up on something. Um, let's see, BB barbell, but I just want to make sure you guys know. Dumbbell or DB, okay? There's no, oh yeah, there is kettlebell. Kettlebell's KB, okay? If you don't have kettlebell access to do the kettlebell deadlift, that's okay, let me know and we'll figure it out, okay? Um, if, does everybody have access to a trap bar? Do you know the hexagon bar? Okay. Cool. If not, I put it in like I really, that's what I'm very particular about progressing you with. Um, if you have access to a trap bar and you have trap bar deadlifted previously, send me a quick video. Okay. Um, and if you look great, I'll, I'll say, Hey, go for it. Send it. Okay. And if you're working with a trainer already, or, you know, a strength coach already, and they have access to it and they feel you look good. Awesome. You know, they're the ones coaching you right now. I fully respect that. Okay. Um, but I just kind of have to plan for people that I don't know yet but now I know you and we're getting to know each other, okay? Um, this is another one, SL. SL is single leg, okay, single leg. Um, RDL, does anybody know RDL? Heard of those before? Romanian deadlift, okay, Romanian deadlift. Um, and then let's see, is there anything else I see? Um, closed hip and open hip, okay, you'll see that on here. That just means that wherever the cable stack is, so if I'm, I have my right knee on the floor, okay, my hip is in the cable systems over here on my right, my hip is open to the cable system, okay? If my cable system's still here, but my left knee is down and my right knee is up, my hip is closed off to the system. Does that make sense? Okay, you'll see that in the video. It'll be really clear to you what that looks like and what that means. Um, let's see. Oh, on your two arm chest press. So we're not gonna bench just yet. Okay, and the, the whole team's kind of working towards that too. They've been benching a lot. So we're gonna take it away a little bit and we're gonna work on, you know, working back to two arm. So actually when you're pressing two dumbbells at once, you're independently stabilizing both of those dumbbells. And that's harder for your brain and your muscles than a barbell with a lot of weight on it. Crazy, right? Okay, so lighter weight, more independent stabilization, a lot more like hockey to be honest, okay? Um, but we're taking a little bit of a break from the barbell to begin, begin the summer. We'll go back to it later in the summer, okay? Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to press all the way up to the top, hold for two seconds. Then you're going to lower down to 90 degrees and hold two seconds, okay? Come all the way to the bottom and press all the way back up. So that's your pattern with that, okay? Um, and you'll see it in the video as well. Um, single arm, we talked about that. Has anybody ever done a Z press? before, heard of a Z press, you'll, um, you'll see it in the video too, but you're going to sit on, uh, on the floor with your legs in a V as if you were going to do like a hamstring stretch. Okay. But you sit nice and tall and you're going to do an overhead press while you're seated on the floor. So I'm sneakily working on releasing your lower backs and your hamstrings while you do some overhead work. Sound cool. <laughs> okay. So I'm also, I try to like find ways to sneak in little things to help like what we call feel goods things that will help you feel better and start your recovery. But we're also still getting good work on them. Okay, try to be creative with that. That was another good question, Jamie. Um, I don't think there's anything else in here though, acronym wise, that might jump out. Um, oh, FWD up here, that's forward. You're crawling forward, bear crawls. Hopefully you guys have done some animal crawls in the past or heard of them if you haven't. 
you'll learn about them. Um, lateral means going sideways, okay? And then backward, I believe, is in lift C. So B, K, W, B, backward, okay? Um, and then there's one foot F, T, and then two foot F, T. So that should help right there. Um, and then any other questions, kiddos, from the rest of you? No? Good, okay. Um, so this is the last piece. Okay, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have a really quick hitter that should take you like 30 minutes or less of speed and agility to work on, okay? Um, your whole lift, again, the first time you do them, they might take you more like an hour and a half just because you're kind of like, okay, what was that again? Looking at the video and that kind of thing. But by like week two or three, you should have your lift down to like an hour. It really shouldn't be too, too much more than that. Maybe 75 minutes if you're kind of taking your time and doing your thing, Okay. Um, I have girls on all ends of the spectrum. I have some girls that are like whirlwinds, like bang in and out, okay, that lift really, try to lift really fast. Um, and I have some girls like Ava that I mentioned earlier that I'm like, you know, Ava, you're going to leave. <laughs> like you've been here too long already, okay? So I'm not sure where you guys fall on the spectrum, um, but I always try to give you that ballpark of about an hour and that's plenty, okay? That really is plenty. Um, but on your, uh, your speed and agility day is like a half hour, really like high intensity, high quality movement, and you're done. Okay, it doesn't have to drag on. Conditioning doesn't have to be super long and arduous. In fact, the more like arduous and hard work it is, the less we see in returns, the less well, you know, you don't recover as well. So we want it to be quick and explosive and really mirror hockey. Does that make sense? Okay, so on Tuesdays, you're going to you know, start with this warm up right here. This is entirely on YouTube as well, which I'll show you before we end. Okay. Um, but you do this quick dynamic warm up. Okay. Dynamic stretches you're all, I'm sure, familiar with, um, like Frankenstein, quad stretch, right? Okay. Knee hugs. Um, and then you jump in and you just follow straight down. So you're going to do a couple drills that are really good for your posture while you're running and sprinting. Okay. And your core. Then you're going to work on your arm drive. You're going to work on your knee drive. You're going to work on some acceleration with some starts, different types of starts. And then you're going to do a little hand-eye reaction work. Okay. And if you don't have a partner to do tennis ball stuff with, don't stress. You can just throw it to yourself and then react to the ball. Okay. There's a lot of ways to slice it and dice it and get it done. Um, and that's it. You're done with your, your work. Okay. And then Thursday, it's the same idea. Um, you start with your warm-up, the same warm-up both days. Okay, and then you do your posture, your we're gonna do some ladder and foot speed stuff. If you don't have a ladder, it's okay. Okay, you can do the same movement patterns without the ladder. Um, you're gonna do some change of direction drills, some plyometrics that are laterally based, and then a couple of cone drills. Okay, um, and then at the end of each day, Tuesday and Thursday, there's six different stick handling drills to do. I did not demonstrate those in the video. Okay, I'm not that good at it yet. Um, I had Megan Hamilton do it for me. So she's in the videos doing them, but it's just dry land. Okay, working with a tennis ball. I think she used a golf ball in the videos because that's what she wanted to do. Um, if you have a slide board in the puck, welcome to do that. I mean, however you want to slice it, you can. Okay, but there's videos of those as well. Um, you don't have to do those six. They're just six that coach sent me that he liked. Okay, so I put them in there for you. But you're going to pick three to do on Tuesday and do the other three on Thursday. Got it? But I left you the choice. I like to give you autonomy wherever I can, the freedom to do what feels good to you. Okay? So there's even some diagrams here for you, and there's videos too of the cone drills for you to do. Um, so what I'm going to do right now, kiddos, is show you the YouTube channel, and I'll send you the link in the email to your program when I send it. Okay? It's just Nor'easter Strength, Strength and Conditioning. So if you type that into YouTube, it should pop right up, but I'll send you the specific link. Okay? Um, and then you navigate it like you would any other YouTube channel. But if you go to playlist, okay, um, there's all kinds of different things in here. This first one, Nor'easter Summer um, 2002 Warm Up, okay, phase one. I will send you the direct link to it, but you can also find it by just searching the playlist, okay. Um, but you'll pull it up. Oh, you're going to love all the ads, huh? Drives me nuts. <laughs> um, but you're going to be able to see me actually do the wall drive drill right and then the next one is the next warm-up drill and they just flow so then you can follow along as you go does that make sense okay so there's that playlist for you and then yep let's get back um then this 
is all of the exercises in your program, okay? So A1 was box jumps, right? So it's in order for you too. So you can just follow along and you shouldn't really have, and I label it both on the video down here and actually like on the video itself. So that's the wrist mobility drill that you're, or strength drill you're gonna do. And A, that little one in between A1 and A2 on lift day, okay? And then finally, that's the, the closed hip. Remember I was talking about how your hips close to the machine, okay? And if you don't have that attachment, don't stress, just let me know. Okay, we'll figure it out. And then it just keeps flowing for you. So that's a really good option for you to have access to, okay? Um, between that and obviously being able to text me, I hope you'll be able to do everything on there and have no issues with it, okay? Um, any other questions before we finish up and wrap up for the night that you can think of? Okay, I know I just threw a ton at your brain. I get it. And it's later in the night. I know you guys have school tomorrow morning still. So um, make sure you get some good sleep. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, let it absorb overnight. And I'll send you the program tomorrow morning or, or tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, and as you get it in your hands and start interacting with it and really trying to get going with it, just reach out with anything. Okay. Never be like, feel weird or embarrassed about it. Like the girls text me all the time and I love it. Okay. I'm here for it. I love seeing you guys be successful. Um, and I can't wait to get you on campus. Sound good? Promise me you'll text me if you need anything. Hollywood Square is here. All right, cool. And then again, if you want to, if you're working with a coach currently and you want to put them in contact with me, I'd love that. Okay. So, um, you know, bring the program to them. If they have questions about it, they can, you know, shoot me an email or call me um, and we can chat about it. Um, however, I can help you guys come to campus healthy, strong, fit, and ready to take on your freshman year of college hockey. I'm all game for it. Got it? All right, you guys are awesome. I'll see you soon and don't be strangers, okay? Thank you. Thank Bye, you. Bye, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.